Greetings, Twin Flames. This is Lucida of Twin Flame RX, and I'm here on June 13th, 2018, with a message that I believe that I've been getting guided to share with all Twin Flames. So today is a new moon. At this moment, I don't even know what sign this new moon is in. I've been through a lot in the last few months, so I'm going to share some personal things and then I'm going to do a reading and send you a Reiki healing. But this is a little bit different type of reading because it's so impromptu. I am actually sitting at my laptop or with my laptop in the chair, the armchair that I always sit and work in when clients call or contact me to do readings via chats on the sites in the description box below and Instant Go, which is also listed there. Basically, I could sit in this position where I'm at for several hours without stopping because clients are contacting me on various platforms for on-demand chat sessions. The last few days, and actually the last few months, it's been difficult for me to sit here um, because of my health concerns. Like, I just want to tell you a little story um, to give you some inspiration that will help you on your journey. So basically, I have two stories. One is someone contacted me for a chat on one of the sites in the description box below a few weeks back. And when I saw their screen name, I immediately was given the message by spirit and felt in my gut. So my intuition was talking. My intuition said, do not answer that person. But then my mind said, well, that is crazy. I need to help them. They may need me really badly. Okay, so um, fast forward a few weeks, the person contacted me again and demanded that I do a channeled heart-to-heart -heart session with them and their beloved after saying something about my prior reading that, you know, it was ridiculous that I was predicting that he and his lover would get back together. Now, mind you, this person's not a twin flame, but either way, I predicted that they would have contact and that they would eventually get back together. The person was upset about me not wanting to do the heart-to-heart -heart and then started bashing me um, on ratings on one of the sites. And... I just always felt that the person needed more than a psychic reading and that's why my gut said not to answer because if I just wanted to be out here um, making money, then I wouldn't turn down clients. So if you have been turned down by me, I just want you to know that it was because spirit told me that it's not a good match, that I'm not going to be able to help you. So... You know, I don't deliberately ignore anybody, um, but I am so busy, I need to focus on certain things. So that's the first lesson for me about my intuition. I have a second lesson um, that I want to share. But the first lesson is about intuition, like I said, and I have up here, I did a Google search for the word intuition, what it means, and we have dictionary, it's probably dictionary.com's answer, right? That's what's on the screen there. Intuition, the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. So it's like you have a feeling, you have a gut feeling, you have a subconscious urge, your higher self is telling you not to do something, not to answer someone, not to go somewhere, not to have a certain procedure done, right? It says a thing that one knows or considers likely from instinctive feeling rather than conscious reasoning. Okay, so an example is your insights and intuitions as a native speaker are positively sought. And then it says synonyms or words that um, have the same meaning but are different are hunch, feeling in one's bones, inkling, sneaking, suspicion, idea, sense, notion, and then there's more. So, you know, one is a psychic, a psychic feeling. An intuitive feeling, right? If you look over here, those images, um, there's one that says, trust your gut. That's your intuition. 
So I want to just share that another um, lesson that I learned on the journey was in the last several weeks, I've been having a, an infected tooth. And um, I was trying to heal it naturally and holistically, but I am also a scientist, so my logical mind and reasoning, so Western medicine scientist, logical mind and reasoning was that I needed some data. So even though my intuitive gut feeling was this tooth is not a tooth that should get a root canal, I still followed the dentist's suggestion to go and get the consultation and microscopic examination for the root canal. Somehow I was, it was just supposed to be a consultation because then I would find out why my tooth looks normal on x-rays, but we'd have more information on why I have an abscess and why it's so painful and whether it's infected. So basically, um, got tucked into the root canal after the microscopic examination, but my gut was always saying, don't ever get a root canal, like don't do it, don't do it. And I read like tons of information beforehand. Well, what happened was the root canal was in process and there's other aspects to this as well because I have a latex allergy so I didn't want to get a root canal because there's rubber like materials that they put into the tooth. Basically um, she couldn't finish my root canal, sent me home with those rubber like materials in my mouth, my body started rejecting it and I had to go get an emergency extraction. Okay, they were thinking I could keep those materials in my mouth for two weeks and no big deal, like we'll just schedule you an extraction any day. But I was like having emergency symptoms last night. So, you know, I suffered for about four months with this tooth and my first instinct was never to get a root canal. And my mouth and jaw was more painful after the attempted root canal than it had been in the last four months. So I just want to say, like, if I would have just followed my intuition and stopped using my logical brain at that point, um, I would have never had any of these problems. <laughs> so I'm not saying that you shouldn't use your logical brain, but what I'm saying is that our higher selves are always guiding us in the right direction that, you know, our thinking minds and our ego, which is based on all of the structures that were put in place on all the programs of us growing up in this matrix of, and it's a medical matrix where basically we're eating foods and contamination in our drinking water. And, um, you know, none of that is addressed first, and nutrition isn't addressed, and food processing is okay, but, you know, what I think, and I'm just going to put it out there because I've been having urges to speak up, this is my purpose in life, is to speak up about this, is that there are things in the food that we eat that are making us sick, that is causing us to have health problems and the whole health system that we have here in the United States is basically rigged up with the pharmaceutical companies and the FDA so that they could just make money and if people like me that actually have because I, I have a book in my head um, that I haven't written yet about all this again I'm a scientist but if people like me spoke up well, they'd probably kill me first. You know, that's one of my fears is getting off before I could expose things. But all the whistleblowers out there are basically the ones that the system wants to get rid of. And, I mean, the whole Anthony Bourdain suicide the other day kind of made me think that, wow, I really need to do my other mission. So my other mission, again, is writing a book about how the food industry has specific additives that are harmful to our health and basically are making us sick to perpetuate sickness. 
And that's why us light workers, a lot of us are holistic and, you know, we have all these new therapies that we want to try and do because we're tired of this matrix and we're tired of being enslaved by this system. Okay, so one of our missions is to speak up about things like this. You know, I just, I just, I don't even know if I, if I'm going to, if I'm going to re upload this video now, because I just, I'm afraid. So if it's up there, I just want you to know it's because I care about this world. Well, I care about this, us ascending. I care about everybody waking up. That is, that is my major mission. And then I'm here to help Twin Flames. So it's not just about me being with my beloved. Okay, I, I am going to tell the truth. I haven't thought about him in weeks in the way that I used to. And we agreed that we are always going to be good friends like a month ago or maybe two months. I don't even know when the last time we had conversation was. All I know is the reason why he woke me up or the reason why he came into my life was to get me out of the job that I was in, in a matrix job, and get me where I am today. And if we're going to work together in the future, great. But if we're not, I have a lot of things that I need to do as a light worker. So I hope that this inspires you. I, I didn't, I shy away from talking about personal things, but the last few weeks I've been having, I've been waking up in the middle of the night and basically when I listen to my higher self, or I listen to see if I hear any messages straight from source, this is the kind of message I'm getting, that I need to stop being afraid and to speak up, okay? So just sharing that with you, I did say that I was going to do a reading, and after all I've been through, I am recuperating on my couch right now with this laptop, and if clients want to come and chat with me, Check the description box below. I'm probably going to, I didn't even know today was a Wednesday. I'm probably going to be on, you know, all the rest of the week trying to just relax and get back to normal health. But I will be able to do readings. I have my cards here. I shuffle them before getting on. Um, these are the cards that I shuffle during sessions when I talk to clients, when I chat with them online. So, yeah, they're not in the best shape because they've been shuffled s several million times. I'm going to cut the deck into three, and we're going to have a, an energy read here with the Rider Waite Tarot about the Divine Masculine energy we'll do, the Divine Feminine, and then Union energy for this new moon. All right, so I'm just going to close my eyes and, guided by spirit, choose a card for the Divine Masculine's energy from the deck. Interesting. So the card that came out about the Divine Masculine's energy here is the Six of Coins. So as you can see, there's um, generosity being granted here. And there's kind of an equal balance with that scale. So basically, this energy of the Divine Masculine in this new moon is Something that I've also been seeing a lot with clients, that the Divine Masculine is realizing that they haven't really been fair to the Divine Feminine at all throughout this journey. They haven't given them the credit for the beautiful blessing that they are in the life of the Divine Feminine. So they are going to be realizing in the new moon that it is time for them to give back, give back to their beloved, give back to their community, and stop being so darn narcissistic. So, so many twins have, you know, that come to me have twins that have narcissistic tendencies. I'm not going to say they have full-on narcissistic personality disorder, but they sure do have narcissistic tendencies. And if any of you are dealing with a narcissist, I have solutions for you um, because I took a program and I'm an affiliate for that program, but I only recommend it to people that I really think would benefit from it. 
Um, and I'm going to be posting that on my website as well. But basically, a few years ago, when I met a false twin or a catalyst, I guess you would say, a soulmate, um, I had to recover from narcissistic abuse, which I finally realized what it was through that person, but then it traced back throughout my life, you know, to inner child wounds and stuff like that, and even previous lifetimes. But my real healing started then. So many of you might have narcissists in your life that, because they're attracted to the empaths, they're basically energy vampires, and they'll do anything to bring you down and they take your energy so that they can survive. But we're not meant to be an, you know, a food source for an energy vampire. So one of the things they have to learn along the journey not only is follow your intuition, but also to learn how to protect your own energy so that you're, you're not bothered by these energy vampires. So you're shielded and protected against them. And I'm going to start doing um, some more healing audios and programs. So I have lots of inspiration um, lately for things that I need to accomplish soon. But this is all to help you on your path. So again, the divine masculine knows that they've been selfish pretty much. And it's time to give back and it's time to like stop making it about themselves. You know, basically their ego, which the negative aspect of their ego is is going to be falling away, okay, and the positive aspects of their ego will stay, but these negative aspects, they have to go. Divine feminine energy in the time of this new moon is so appropriate, the fool. So this is the divine feminine just saying, heck with it all, I'm going to follow my heart and my soul, twin flame or not, if they're there or not, and so many twins that I know, they're following their passion, they are working on their purpose and their goals. They're trying new treatments for their clients, holistic therapies. They come to me for guidance on that as well. I mean, I have so many more twins this year talking to me about, talking to me about their mission work and asking questions about it. I help to guide them and, you know, give them insights and divine inspiration. Like, I can't really, um, I don't really want to talk about the specifics of it, but I've given a few clients direct direct um, suggestions for their healing businesses that are working for them, that are bringing forth results for themselves, and that they're learning about this because they are a twin flame, and I'm helping them to bring it forward into the light. And I mean, I'm basically giving them ideas that are divinely inspired on the spot, so, I mean, this is because our role is that we need to we need to be a community of light workers that works together for the greater good. All right. So, I don't know, I'm getting so passionate. Okay. So, the last card is the union energy and we have justice. So, justice represents the truth, right? So, for the union, the truth is about to come out with this new moon. So, like if your beloved doesn't understand that you are their twin flame, they are going to figure that out, like ASAP. And they're gonna start they're gonna start respecting it by giving back. Okay, so they are not going to just sit idly and do nothing anymore. You're gonna see signs that they're gonna start coming forward and doing what is right. I know some twins who have to complete parts of their original mission and journey so that they can come together with their beloved. Um, but all of that, you know, is coming into divine timing. With the events that are going on in the world, you have to understand, if you are a true twin flame, you are going to resonate with the fact that we are here in this time period in history for a specific purpose. So anyone who's a whistleblower, I believe, is a light worker. You know, people on the news, like, I'm going to name a bunch of names. Like, you might not resonate with every single name here, but I have always looked up to the person since I was a kid in the schoolyard. I always was the person that was going 
for the underdog. I always had friends who were the underdogs. And if they, sometimes they didn't even want to be my friend, but I was like guided to be there for them when no one else was. And I was also the black sheep, so to speak. But I'm just going to name some names because I have books on my shelf here of people that I feel are light workers and people that I feel are maybe even twin flames. Um, all I know is that we have a, you know, a community of people. So I have, well, this is a book, but there, there's so much illumination in this book, the book of Enoch. Um, another one is Ik Chi Lee. There's a brainwave vibration book that I have on my shelf. Rudy Tanzi, he is a scientist that does Alzheimer's disease research. So when I was doing it, I was exposed to his work and people that worked around him and read all his papers. Now he's doing a um, collaboration with Deepak Chopra, um, another light worker, and they're talking about super brain. And basically all that is about raising your consciousness. I have another Deepak Chopra book here. We have Guy Kawasaki, um, who's talking about enchanting others, basically inspiring, but his book is an enchantment. Okay, um, so those are just a few. I have Kevin Trudeau. Kevin Trudeau, uh, he got himself in a lot of trouble over the years, but I feel a lot of that is fabricated media hype to kind of downplay any messages that he wants to share. Um, then there's people like Dr. Mercola. There are the Dr. Edward Group, a holistic doctor who sometimes appears on the Alex Jones show. But Dr. Group has his own line of supplements that are awesome for holistic therapy and healing. I mean, there's just so many. St. Therese. Um, of Lisieux, she is, she was doing just small things to help others. Um, and you know, I was sleeping the other night and upset about everything going on and kept waking up. And finally, you know, I just gave in and I was like, okay, Jesus, you know, you and me go way back. <laughs> But I feel like on this path, sometimes we get thrown off only to get pushed back on. But I will share that Jesus Christ like, is the person, is the deity, is the one, is the avatar who saved me from a near-death experience. My belief that I could come back talking to him before as my car was hurling off a mountainside, um, you know, asking for another chance in 2012 was what got me to where I am now. So basically, I hope that you can understand where I'm coming from in this message. If you have anything, any knowledge, any insight that you need to share, get it out there. Um, you just can't, other whistleblowers actually, um, I feel is Anthony Bourdain, like he was about to blow the whistle on some things with his shows and, you know, he's, he's dead. So another one, Princess Diana, I am not, I am a, conspiracy theorists of conspiracies. So basically, I'm looking for the truth. That is what I've been doing all my life. And that is what we were sent here to do because truth is light. So if you're a twin flame, it's time for you to get on your mission. Your twin is always going to be with you in other dimensions. If they're not physically here with you, and there's tons of twins that reunited after several years. So even if you feel like it's hopeless, you will be together. You just need to have faith. You just need to trust. And you just need to realize that maybe you need to do something 
you know, like write a book or write a screenplay, write a movie, um, write a novel, write poetry, write music, help people uncover corruption, whatever it is that you have a passion to do. Maybe you need to get started on that. And that is going to be the catalyst to bringing you and your beloved back together. And so with that, um, I am going to send you some Reiki healing for yourself and your beloved so that you both realize the truth and the light that you were supposed to and meant to elucidate here on the planet and that you both follow your higher self's intuition to those truths and in the release of those truths to increase the consciousness of everyone on this planet. We are going into super consciousness, so I'm sending you the energy of super consciousness for yourself and your beloved. And I hope that you have a great new moon. Write your list of intentions of what you want to manifest through this moon cycle and forward to the end of the year. And be very specific. Write it out like you already have it. Believe you already have it. And be grateful and give thanks that you already have it. Have a beautiful day or evening. Namaste.